Hey everyone, this is Ben with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in this anatomy lesson, I am going to cover the coccyx bone, also known as the tailbone. Anatomists classify the coccyx bone as an irregular bone and it makes up the inferior portion of the vertebral column, which is part of the axial skeleton. And this bone allows for the attachment of several muscles and ligaments. It provides support for the pelvic organs and it stabilizes you while you're sitting down. Now, if you're a nurse or other healthcare professional, there are two important things you're gonna to wanna to remember about the coccyx bone. Number one, if you have a patient who is immobile, you're gonna to wanna to monitor that tailbone area for the potential of pressure ulcer development, just as Nurse Sarah indicated in our pressure ulcer video. And number two, if you have a patient who breaks this bone, it's gonna be very painful. And so you're gonna to have to consider that as they're moving around and so forth. Now, why do anatomists call this bone the coccyx and how do they abbreviate it? Well, because it has a triangular pointed shape, it was actually named after the cuckoo bird's beak. In fact, the word coccyx literally means cuckoo in the ancient Greek language. So this bone is cuckoo for cocoa puffs, kind of like me. As far as its abbreviation is concerned, anatomists label each vertebra with a letter and number. So your cervical vertebra, for example, will be C1 through C7. Your thoracic vertebra will be like T1, T2. The coccyx are gonna be labeled as CO1, CO2, CO3 for those individual bones. Now let's talk a little bit about the anatomy of this bone. In the average skeleton, the coccyx is gonna consist of three to five small vertebrae, which are often fused together in adults. However, in some adults, not all of the coccyx bones fuse together and they can remain separate in usually two or three different segments. And like I said in my video, comparing the male pelvis versus the female pelvis, the male coccyx bone tends to curve more forward toward the front of the pelvis, whereas the female coccyx bone tends to be a little straighter. Now let's take a look at some of the landmarks and structures on the coccyx bone. And as you look at the superior or top portion of the coccyx bone where CO1 is located on the posterior or back side, you'll notice these two prominent tubercles that look kind of like horns coming off the back angling upwards. These are called the coccygeal cornua, and they articulate or form a joint with the cornua of the sacrum. Next, there is an oval-shaped facet at the top called the base, which allows for articulation with the apex of the sacrum above, forming the sacrococcygeal symphysis, an antiarthrodial joint that allows only slight movement. Now, on either side of CO1, you'll notice a bony process extending out which is called the transverse process. And again, transverse just means extending across and a process means a projection coming off a bone when we're talking about bones. And these processes meet the lateral edge of the sacrum and they allow for the passage of the anterior aspect of the fifth sacral nerve. The thin lateral borders or sides of the coccyx allows for the attachment of muscles such as the gluteus maximus and the coccygeus, as well as ligaments such as the sacrotuberous and sacrospinous ligaments. In addition to those two lateral borders, the coccyx also has two surfaces, an anterior or front surface, which is concaved or curved inwardly, and it's also grooved, allowing for the attachment of muscles such as the levator ani, and there is also a posterior or back surface on the coccyx, which is convex or curved outwardly, and it's marked by several tubercles. The most prominent ones, as I've pointed out before, are the coccygeal cornua. Finally, we have the apex, which is the inferior end of the coccyx bone. And the word apex means something that forms a point, and the end of the coccyx is kind of rounded at the tip, but it still comes to somewhat of a point when you look at the overall bone because it is triangular in shape. And this apex is gonna allow for the attachment of the tendon of the external anal sphincter. And the very tip of it can sometimes be split in some people. Okay, that wraps up this anatomy lesson over the coccyx bone. We have a free quiz on our website that you can take by clicking in the description or comment section below. In addition, we have an entire playlist of anatomy and physiology videos, so you might want to check those out. Thank you so much for watching, and please subscribe.